Well, I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. Uh, but not as it, you may think. Uh, I'm not really allowed to go in here, so I won't. Uh, looks like uh, they're already moving machinery out. Uh, well, the reason I'm here is, as you can see here, big roll on roll off skip which is uh, full of cut up steel there's another skip there full of steel there's another skip there which let's go have a look at it Ooh, that's some chink that's some chink oh, I remember that that was the uh I remember buying that floor grid. That floor grid was dead expensive. It was something like eighteen pound a square metre. Uh, look at it now in the skipper's scrap. That massive beam. That was part of a uh, a, a measuring bed. They had a they had a, a farrow. Um, hang on. Yeah. So I'm back here, but I'm I'm, I'm not robbing. I've been given something and I'll, I'll explain why but uh, yeah this these these like pallets here would fit on this bed and the product we made uh, at the other end was robotically unloaded so you know, a robot um, came in picked it up and took it out so it had to be dimensionally very accurate so the they made a a test bed into this big solid girder you put it on and then there's a, a device called a farrow arm um, and it sits in it and it's got a probe and you, you like touch the your first reference point and then you can touch from the all different points and the computer works out the dimensions between spatially between these points and if it's within tolerances it gets shipped and if it's not they tweak it until it is obviously they don't need it now do they right okay why am i here well there's a lot of scrap here and the place has gone bust I'll rephrase that well there's a lot of iron here and as the company's gone bust and gone that means it's a lot of scrap so i rang my biggest yard that I know, give them a hint about all this, and it seems like, well, I do know, they won the contract of the uh, <coughs> administrators to clear the yard. It's, <coughs> it's a rented building, so I guess the landlord will be wanting all this gone as quick as possible that they could re-rent the building. Right, down there, way down there there's a big old saw it's got a big old motor on it so when i rang the scrap man i said i believe you won the contract he said yeah i said well it's time to pay your dues so what do you want i said uh i want this big motor off this old saw down there and it'd be good for me a youtube video he said fine he said but we ain't we ain't been hanging around. He says um we're down there on Monday, so get up there Saturday morning. There's, there will be some lads on site, but he says you know the lads anyway, and the, the lads know you. He says and tell them. Pete said, I can have the motor off it, so that's fine. So uh, I'm gonna go down there. We'll have a look at the saw and see what I need to do to get it off. It breaks me out. Let's go have a look down there. Wow, oh my goodness. See that? We'll, we'll go down there first. See all that? It's all clear. All right, it's all right, we're back down here. Right, so how did they make these uh, pallets? They, well, they make it's, it's fabrication jig work. So, as you can see here, they make a frame. And 
they weld bits and pieces on and, and they put clamps on like that okay and basically you'll get a cut piece of steel and it'll fit between those pieces and a piece between that piece and a, a piece between there all the way across to there so it can't go further than that way and it can't go further than that way so it will fit just in between there touch there touch there same on that side so the welder would go on or the laborer would go bang 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 the welder would just come in tack it all up they then put the uprights in uh, so the upright would go fit on the inside of that plate you've got a nut and bolt here set so the dimension from there to there is set so you just drop the post in that would come up to about here they'd weld that in they put another one in there that bolt stops it going that way same at the other end and um, well you get the gist same again here you would drop a put a piece of box section in the these are set at that width so the box section can't move that way or that way and with the bolt there it can't move that way so yeah they drop all the pieces in and then the welder welds them all up so once they design that jig and then they do the run of pallets well the way the company worked they made a prototype that got bought off by the customer they then made a pre-volume using the jig that went to the customer they did a trial run advised any tweaks that would be altered a little and then they did the volume run so that would have a lifespan of probably about nine months but very frequently the year after they would turn around and say how oh, we could do it we've damaged some we could do another five so generally keep the jigs for a few years and saves on the development time for the next job right so yeah brought out here into the graveyard uh, as you can see this one here is not rusty because this would have been probably one of the last jobs we've done however it's all brought out here in the graveyard and it ran from here all the way up to the so since I've been finished a week ago the scrapmen have come in and they have got rid of all that lot it's nothing to them it's scrap iron I would estimate that there was probably about 25 ton and there's an even older graveyard down there there's an even there's another skip down here maxi lead metals up at uh, it's got a 0161 so that's a Manchester number as you can see way up there there's a lot more of the old stillages look at that beam like it's like I'm thinking like oh I could put a piece of that off and I could go but I could make an anvil out of it oh anyway that's not mine is it it's me I would say it's me mates it's it's the yard yard man it's the scrapyard guy who's uh, making the money on this <coughs> right it looks like they've been working down here as well because all this was all full of old old jigs so it looks like they haven't been messing around at all looks like they're utilizing some of the uh stillages i think for loading up the scrapping anyway this is my i'm not going to say payment this is my uh thanks for the phone call ian 
and it's an old automatic Amada 400 saw, big, big band saw. It's got a, a motor on there, and somewhere on here. There ought to be another motor and I'm going to say I've been done. Uh, well, there's the pulley. That looks like it's the, the, the bed mounting. Well, it looks like uh, the motor's been taken off. It looks like I've been done did. Oh well. I'll have that one off. Is that, that the uh, the girding for that area? Oh, oh, there we go. It's been hid it. It's not as big as what I thought. Oh well. It's something. But look, somebody's already taken somebody's already taken the guard off. Already taken the belts off. These are, these are a bit lads in yard, this. So, uh, they're going to have a shock on Monday, aren't they, when they come come in and find out it's gone. What else can I have off here? That. That's it. Dismantle that and, like, make me own vice. I'd make a big vice, wouldn't it? Uh, that's it, guys. That's my job this morning. So, ooh, there might be some, uh, there might be some good cable in there. Hey. Right, look at that. Look at that there. That's, that's quite thickish cable, isn't it? Well, I'm going to see the lads. I don't fancy working here. I'll see if I can pick it up. Take the... Yeah, see if they'll let me use the fork truck and get it somewhere where I've got access. Wow, feels so strange to be back here again. Uh, you all recall this uh, this skip I used to have a look in. Let's see what's inside here. All that big box section. Yeah, what, what's that? Oh, uh, um, it's a light. It's a light. Hang on, there's another one down there as well. Uh, something like what uh, Cruiser Mac had the other day. Big. Uh, I, I got. Let me get down. They look like those on the wall there. Oh, that's a pity. Pity I can't have them. No, as I don't work here anymore, I, I can't have those. Okay, so it's in place. I brought the car over. I brought myself a few tools. I don't know what I need. So I've got my spanner set. Got a socket set cordless grinder, chisel, big hammer, a little a hammer, and uh, some adjustables and a stilson. So, let's weigh the job up. Bit of aluminium, bit of brass. This is what we're after. Yeah. It's a three-phase induction motor. Yeah, whatever. Mounting bolt there, mounting bolt there, a tensioning screw, bracket here, uh, and there's two there, and there's likely to be two. Well, right, I've got my tools precariously balanced because you do know I'm going to knock them off and they're going to go all over the floor. It's a 17mm spanner, 
and uh, they seem to be free enough. So with those nuts off, uh, I managed to take uh, that plate off as well. This whole thing has just dropped down. I can see the hinge mechanism. I may just try to snap brass the uh, casting castings. So well, first attempt will be to try to remove this variable drive system. Vari variable drive as in variable speed pulley system. These, these pulleys move in and out. So obviously uh, the more they're in, the tighter the gap at the bottom, the belt will ride higher. For example, this height. Wind it all out, the belt will go down to the bottom. Decreasing the size of the pulley, increasing or decreasing the revs. Same on this side. You, you move this handle in and out, pulls the the, 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 the pulleys go in and out so you can alter the, the revs from the motor via the pulley system to that machine and I think it's all done automatically by this that would have been connected that chain would have been connected to that so as you did that one it probably automatically did both don't know my job was in an office not on the shop floor doing stuff like this but I'm struggling a bit and I've taken all the bolts off it's given me some movement so I need to get that off to get that off I might need, I might need the cordless grinder go through through these but I've got to be worried that that big spring doesn't go whoosh that way I'll just get the big hammer out I'll wait me to get that off and with that off I'll wait to get my big hammer up job see if I can break that casting It's not cast iron. <laughs> well, hammering and bangering got that end loose. And then I've got the hinge pin free. Oh, that's coming. What's stopping this plate coming off is this variable pulley. As you know, there was a collar here with a big spring on. So I decided to cut through the retaining bolts all the way around. I did cut the spring in half as well so it wouldn't have the same velocity. And as I cut, stood on this side and cut through the last one, uh, it ended up over the so there was a, it went push. So I'm glad I weren't studying in front of it. If in doubt, give it a clout. In doubt, give it a clout. Right, cut through that. But the uh, the angle ground is holding the uh, camera up.
Hey. Well, talk about making this air work. Needs must. <laughs> oh dear, I wouldn't be here for friggin' ever. I should have just ah, seen a bit. So there we go, we've got control unit off. We we unscrewed the uh, hydraulic fittings, but we've just angled round straight through the cabling. I'll follow that back, cut off as much as I can. Right. It started to rain. I better uh, better get my finger out. These lads will be wanting to go home soon anyway. The coolant pump was literally two bolts. Cut off the cables. That's off. I am getting shouted at now. Come on, I'm on my uh, last few minutes. It's probably unlikely I'll be able to get that hydraulic pump off. But a uh, bit of a shame. What it looks like there's a lot more than five minutes work in getting that pump off oh well there we go ian norrid his shed I'm soon to be back there all the control unit big motor as much cabling as i can get there's some more to get off yet <laughs> so like i said not gonna have time to get that motor off I've, time, I've pulled all the cabling through, goes through that hole, that says danger electricity. I pull that open, and oh my giddy ant, look at all that. Mitch, I'm going to have to leave, unfortunately. I might just get a hammer and smash this, the switches off. I'll certainly just whiz along with the grinder, cut all that cable off, pull it through in the car. <laughs> cars, cars filling up nicely. Lovely. Let's do. Should we do that again? Money in the bank. Right, I've said it, I've got to go. <laughs> I'm stretching it now. now. This might be brutal, but I ain't leaving all those uh, contactors in. All with the uh, silver, silver tips there, which is, uh, can't see them so well. The, 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 well on all these things of course i did see some copper in there as well all right just gonna bash that last piece off and uh, i'll get kicked off side and i'll see you guys back in the shed like i said who'd have thought i'd have been here S back here so soon but it's poignant uh yeah right <laughs> stop stop filming stop gabbing and get off sight see you later well we're back home again it's wet that is a miserable rainy overcast day uh, i've got to get this stuff out of the car and into the shed a lot Oh, yeah, oh, oh, you weren't supposed to see them lights. Uh, as it happens, on the way home, I found some lights that looked just like them that was in that skip. But these are not those. These were on the side of the road. I'll just make that point clear. Right, I've got to get that lot. I dare put it in the door to space uh, and I've got to kind of make a way through there and put it all up there. 
I'll do that. By the steel, by the sheet, well, steel slides on steel very easily. Too heavy for me to pick up, so I, at least I can work, in it, work on it here because it, it's chucking it down outside. Shy. Oh. Come on. Let's show you where we're up to. So, ha, yes, the daughter's lost her space. Well, that's got me sorted tonight. Uh, I'll do that. I'll look inside that control box uh, in another video. See, got a walkway all the way through. Copper. So, there's still a lot of stuff in the car, but uh, it can stay there till tomorrow. We got all the wiring. Uh, didn't see them. So that's me, Ian, down but not out, fighting back, stealing my resolve. Remember, if it don't kill you, it can only make you stronger. We'll catch you in the next one. Soon. That dirty head. I had that motor there. I couldn't leave it there. It was too heavy for me to pick up. I'm getting old. I'm a weakling now. So I stripped it here in place. It wasn't as easy as I thought. All these uh, washers had been welded together. So I couldn't get the woodruff key out. Anyway, using my big one, a bit of persuasion, we've managed to knock the rotor through. That's, I think, uh, a pressed steel. I don't think it's uh, cast. It didn't feel like cast. But I've got a tiny little problem. Okay, I put some sheet steels down. But I've now got oil all over my daughter's gym mats. So I'd better get that tidied up before I'm no longer uh, my daughter's favourite person. See you in the, see you in the next one.